Okay, listen up. Recently, I've asked uh, some of the people I follow online, the oomphies, if you will, um, to recommend me some outsider art and, consequently, outsider artists. <laughs> I kind of compiled some of this here. Um, part of this is what I've been recommended. Part of this is what I have known myself for some time or have found out about recently. And I think it's just a very good, uh, you know, as good of an excuse as any to just talk about outsider art in general. And maybe some of these people on this list specifically. Because all of this is a very fascinating area for me. Um, so I have just a few notes I want to make generally. And then after that, on a more personal level, I guess, about some of the artists on this specific list. Um, so, the first one is probably the most obvious one, especially if you're at least somewhat familiar with outsider art as an area of human experience, I guess. And uh, it's that, not really by definition, but kind of almost by definition in a sort of unwritten rule type of way, quite a lot of um, the people who are considered to be outsider artists uh, have some sort of uh, mental health difficulties or, you know, prevalent neurodivergent traits that affect their life in uh, usually a pretty un unpleasant, unfortunate way. And so because of that, or not necessarily because of that, but like in correlation with that, um, you might find quite a few unsavory parts in biographies of some of the people that you might research related to outsider art. Including some of the people here on the, on the, on the picture, on the list, whatever. Um, so just be prepared. Because, once again, it's not really a rule, but it seems to be a somewhat of a rule. It's kind of the outsider part of the outsider art uh, almost presupposes that the person needs to, the, the, the artist needs to be at least in some way disconnected from the consensus social reality um, and by that becoming an outsider not a requirement, but it seems to be a pretty prominent pattern within within outsider artists. Um, yeah, um, unfortunate, or I don't know, maybe it's not unfortunate, maybe just it is what it is type situation. Um, specifically in this list, I would like to mention two people. Um, go one, uh, the, the one that's like the second one from the top, uh, the Adolf Wilfli. He was a, hmm, would you believe it, a painter from Austria. No connection, as far as I know, but yeah, no, his art is genuinely very interesting, look it up. But if you look up his... Disco no, that's not. Discography is something different. His biography, I guess. Uh, there are a few documented cases of this guy attempting to uh, abuse children. Let's just leave it at that. You know, if, if, it's, if it's something that can trigger some of your trauma, yeah, please be wary of that because it is a very... Like, it's personally a, a very touchy... That, that's such a weird way to... That's probably not the word I should be using it when talking about this, but like it's, it's a very personally affecting kind of topic for me, so I was a little bit, <laughs> a little bit surprised and bummed out, to be honest, when I started reading his biography, but yeah. Unfortunately, stuff like that, par for the course in the area. The other one is, um, that's probably... The most well-known of the people in this list, especially 
for chronically online people just like me. And you, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> I'm so I'm I'm sorry to out you like that, but I mean I mean you Anyways <laughs> Um, the probably the most well-known person from here is Harry Davis of Temple OS fame. If you know, you know. But if you don't, um, he has repeatedly said some absolutely wild, hateful stuff in his like Twitter posts and streams and whatever. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just. Yeah, has been happening for a long time with him. Well, has been happening. That's that's a weird tense to use. Because like, like, that's not the tense you used to. You use in English to talk about a person who is deceased. Anyways, when he was alive, he said some... He has been continuously saying some wild stuff. But it doesn't... What I'm going to say doesn't justify at all the stuff that he said. Of course not, but... As with many things, there are explanations for why stuff like that happens, and I think I personally, for myself, have found some explanations for that. Um, it's just that, uh, you know, some types of mental health issues, um, or, you know, disorders, whatever you want to call them, there are different classifications, different ways to talk about that kind of stuff. Uh, I know that a lot of therapists even don't like the word diagnosis, um, which I kind of agree with. People are just different, but like, any, anyways, uh, that's neither here nor there. Especially people with schizophrenia, like Terry Davis here, he has had schizophrenia. Uh, there is a tendency for them to say some wild, aggressive stuff or attempt to do some wild aggressive stuff while they're in the throes of said schizophrenia or whatever kind of fit they're having. Uh, and me saying that I, I don't want to come across judgmental in any way, I am mentally ill myself. Many a diagnosis, officially, officially, currently, currently, Disabled, technically, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> Anyways, um, when you're having, when you're in emotional and mental states like that, uh, the brain needs to find, usually needs to find some sort of coping mechanism, the way to exorcise the demons, perhaps. Um, and that's, I guess, that, that's one of the reasons disorders are called disorders, is that the way the brain chooses to cope with it is either destructive or, you know, disruptive to the person's life or the life of people around this person. And this seems to be very much the case for... Harry Davis, you know, he needed to get the demons out in some way or another, and that was the way his brain, like, or he chose, it's difficult to assign blame because it's a very difficult topic, but you know what I mean. Um, once again, not just, it's not justified, but there is an explanation. And from what I personally researched, um, from what I heard, from people who have had the chance to talk with Terry offline uh, while he was in semi-lucid states. They say he was a pretty chill guy, and it seems like in many cases like that, all of that aggressive, wild, hateful stuff is not really something that person believes in, per se, at least not to a significant extent, and at least not while they're in somewhat stable of a point uh, and th that kind of reactionary sort of stuff is um, very much a symptom of having a fit of sorts 
be it, you know, psychosis, psychosis or you know, whatever else. And once again, this is just like not judgmental, not in any way like trying to diminish that per people as people. I myself have had a couple of psychosis and psychosis related experiences that were very, very scary. And I don't want that to happen ever again in my life. And I do not wish that stuff on anyone. So I say this with full, you know, I understand, at least in some way. Anyways, be careful while researching this sort of stuff. I would recommend being prepared mentally and emotionally. Okay, so the next thing is going to be a little bit of a palate cleanser after all of that, the heavy stuff. Um, a little bit more of a fun thing. And it's that one of these people, pick your guess who, one of these people is actually an artist hailing from the very home city of mine. And it's, I don't know which one you've guessed, but it's the third one down in the second part of the list. His name is Oleh Mitasov. And uh, yeah, he's from my own home city of Kharkiv, Ukraine. Um, he's not alive anymore. He died around, like around the year 2000. I don't remember the exact year, but somewhere around that area. Area? Area of time? Do you say area of time? Anyways, you know what I mean. Um, I have seen some of his work in real life. I've seen it with my very own eyes. I have seen it. Because it's just, some of it is just kind of graffiti type stuff uh, that you could see, or you could have seen at least, at the very least, a few back a few years ago, uh, around the area where he used to live. Um, on just random buildings, houses, kind of that stuff. Um, I don't know if any of it is it has survived just, you know, time renovations, people not considering his stuff art, like with a lot of people who are considered to be outsider artists. Um, yeah, they're not very... That's, once again, that's the outsider part. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know if any of it survived. I hope at least something of it survived because uh, another, you know, another aspect of it is that not only time, but also the city has been one of the most attacked during the war. Um, and it, 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 it continues to be attacked consistently. Three plus years a full scale war. Uh, buildings are still being destroyed. There's still like at least a few like air raid sirens every day. The shit is scary. Like, and my parents are still there. That is scary. But anyways, I don't know if any of that survived. I hope it did. Because like, unfortunately, once again, like with many of outsider artists, not a lot of people know about them, or even if they know about them, out of that percentage of the not a lot of people who know about um, outsider art. Also, quite a few of them actually consider it to be art or valuable in any way. Um, and especially with Mitasov, you know, what he did didn't look like what people traditionally see as art, uh, but it did, I think, serve a very similar sort of purpose to any type of art. And, um, yeah, but uh, back then, when he was doing most of his stuff, um, difficult time, another difficult time, yet another difficult time for the city and the country and whatever, um, only a few years after the Soviet Union collapsed. And I think some of his stuff, some of the stuff that he has done is like 
technically still during the time of the Soviet Union, but like the last few years. But like, yeah, um, he died like a, uh, only a few years after the Soviet Union collapsed. So the country was in a pretty chaotic state. And to be honest, very understandably, very justifiably, even people who are very considerate and, you know, artistically minded had very different very different priorities back then. So when the guy died and they, you know, they needed to renovate the apartment, a lot of the stuff has just been destroyed, especially like the biggest pain in my heart, in my very heart, is the, the fridge. If you know, you know, if you don't know, just look up Mitasov and one of the first things that comes up is the fridge. Really cool piece. I love it. Uh, really, really cool. Um, yeah, just didn't survive. Because, yeah, e e even back then and back there, not a lot of people knew about Mitasov. Um, he's, he's known, but mostly in this like super underground kind of art scene. And in like a very, very like alternative kind of circles. Um, so, yeah. Justice for my boy. And uh, with that, I think we can move to another point that I wanted to make. And it's it's kind of related to what I've said a couple of times regarding to Mitasov. Um, is that some of the stuff on this list, I can see and I understand how some people would not see some of the stuff here as art because it's not, it might not be even close to the usual understanding of what art is and what art looks like, but to me personally, it still feels like art and that's the, the, the most important thing. It, the, the, it, it conveys that unique point of view or unique state of mind or emotional state that the person was going through or you know a lot of this stuff is people just once again uh, exercising their demons in a way coping um but yeah uh, what i'm talking about specifically here in this list uh, these few people once again terry davis probably qualifies for that because you know temple of west not technically a piece of art, but it kind of is, you know what I mean? Uh, also, Time Cube, which I think is also relatively well-known kind of thing in weirdo circles, you know, terminally online kind of circles. Um, if you don't know what that is, look up the, the video by Frederick Knudsen, I think it was. Um, it's a pretty, like, it's a big video, it's like a couple million views or something, like, like, look it up, it's pretty good, it describes it a lot, but technically it's not a piece of art, it's like a pseudo-scientific theory, slash what people nowadays are calling skyza posts, and, um, it is that, but it also feels very artistic in a way, it feels like it conveys that that are very emotional penetralia of someone with a uh, unique worldview. Perhaps, if you will. The same kind of goes for the last thing on the list, the Mario Hara Baby Seal Mama. It is, it's a YouTube channel. I think this person is also on some other social media, but I'm not sure, but for sure on YouTube, that's how I found them, found out about them. Um, they just, usually they just post, you know, cute seal videos, which, but on its own, you know, very cute, very nice. It doesn't necessarily qualify as art, but if you follow the channel, and if you look at the community posts and just combine that with the way they t 
title their videos and the way they... the kind of descriptions they put under their videos. There is a feeling. I don't know how to describe it, but there is a feeling. Like, it does put... interacting with it does put me in some very inquisitive, like, existential states. <laughs> because... Uh, I don't know how to, like, I legitimately don't know how to describe it. I, I don't think I have, not even the vocabulary, the vocabulary to describe it, but like, the conceptual understanding of stuff like that. I don't have enough of that to, to, to explain what, what that is. But it is there. And I hope you will find it too, when you interact with it. Um, uh, it reminds me a lot... It, it, it kind of, I guess, the value of it to me with this particular person and what they do is that, once again, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it is made with the purpose of being art in any way, but it does, but it does provide a very, like, an extremely unique frame of mind that you can, you will not be able to find anywhere else. Um, baby Seal, whatever, Baby Seal channel. Yeah, Baby, baby Seal channel, look it up. Cool stuff, but it's, it's a bit weird, but like in a cool way. I would say it's, it's, it's not in that, it's not cursed, at least to me. Uh, it is weird in a very endearing way, to me personally. Very, like, indecipherable, but in a fun way. Anyways, uh, the other um, person from this list I wanted to mention is... Um, also, like, again, not really well-known, but, like, at least some presence, internet presence, uh, because... Um, uh, there has been a video made about this person some time ago by um, Atrocity Guide. Very good video. Look it up. It's the Olililia um, one. It's kind of like my elevator pitch for what this person does. And like the whole like situation with this person. Is that it's kind of like Chris Chan good ending. Which is very endearing to me. Very endearing. I was really, really surprised in a good way, where I, like, wait, people on the internet can actually treat neurodivergent people in a good way, or at least in a neutral way, which doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't make them worse, um, it doesn't reinforce negative behaviors in them, and actually reinforces good behaviors. Uh, really endearing story, I think. Really, really cool, unique stuff that this person is doing. I think uh, they're mostly known for um, a video game that they're working on, and I think it was like at least one book that they've written, probably more, and just some of their like posts online, like forum posts, or maybe they have a website. I don't necessarily remember, but it's, it's very unique. It's very cool. Once again, that kind of the same thing that goes for most of these. It puts you in a very unique frame of mind, even though it's not always necessarily something that is that was intended by the person to be made as art, it still provides a very, very, very cool, very cool change of perspective. Anyways, here's a dog that I looked after yesterday. Isn't it like the best dog ever? I think he's like the best dog ever. I'm so jealous of his humans. Like, oh my god, imagine. <laughs> Damn.